going to start in seated this morning. Seated. Take that first moment and kind of find your yeah. seat. Maybe a half lotus or a full lotus, just whatever you're feeling, and take a moment and tune into the breath. Maybe the gaze is soft. Maybe you close the eyes. So just starting to allow the inhales and exhales to lengthen, allowing that breath to slow. And maybe you take a second to set an intention here. Or to just kind of create a moment of focus for your practice. And in that next breath, we're just going to go ahead and take the right hand to the outside of the right hip. You might go a little bit farther out, then you're going to take the left arm up and over. You might even be able to bend the elbow a little bit, trying to roll the body open. Then as you exhale, we're going to sweep forward, taking it all the way to the other side. So that left hand starts to ground, right hand's really reaching. And then we're going to come back towards center. Well, actually, the right hand ends up grounding behind you as the left hand comes to the outside of the right knee. Once you find your twist, inhaling to pull through the crown to lengthen the spine. Exhaling, you're taking the gaze a little bit farther over that back shoulder. And not pulling too deeply into your twist, just sort of warming up that spine. And when you exhale, we're gonna take it all the way to the next side. So that left hand's coming to ground, just the right hand comes to the left knee. Finding your twist and then working with your breath to inhale for some length. Exhale just a little bit deeper. In that next breath, we're going to come back towards center. We're going to go ahead and take the hands behind the back, clasping them, rolling those shoulders open. Inhaling for some leap, and then exhaling to start to fold forward, letting the arms fall forward or just point straight up, but kind of pulling through those hands so that you feel that nice, gentle opening and stretch in the shoulders. And then as you inhale, we're going to make our way back up. We're going to start to roll over the knees, moving into your tabletop. And then from here, just going ahead and taking a moment to move through some cat-cow. Finding whatever free form movement that you need to here. And then as you're ready, we're going to really ground in those hands, engage the core and the right legs coming straight out behind you. Maybe you take a minute to just kind of do some circles, bringing a little bit of movement into that hip. And then in that next breath, we are going to start to do some tabletop curtsy. So you're going to take the right leg out tap outside, then take it across the left leg and tap back. So we're going to do the right leg eight times. So you're coming out to tap, back for two, three, four, five, six, we're going to eight, seven, and last one, eight. After that eighth one, we'll come back out long, plant that foot, and just sort of walk over to that side. You might let the toes start to rise. Just finding a little bit of a release here. And 
And then we're crawling back forward. We're gonna find our tabletop. If you need to find some movement here, you've got a couple breaths. And then we're gonna take that left leg out. Just find a little bit of movement in that hip since we know we're about to move some more here. Then we're gonna go ahead and take the leg out to the left and start to move through those eight curtsies. So coming over towards the right. Two, three, four, five, six, last two, seven, and eight. After that eighth one, we'll come back out wide. Start to lift that foot, make whatever adjustments it needs to as you crawl over towards the left to get your stretch. And then from here, we're gonna make our way back towards center. Take a couple moments to move through some cat cow. And then from here, we're going to take that right leg back out. You're going to pull it up just a little bit so you've got a little bit of an arch in the spine. And then from here, we're going to bend, extend, and then crunch. And you come back out, bend, extend, crunch. We do that five times. So we're already at two coming out, bending, extending, crunching in. Coming out for four, bend, extend, and then last one as we come out for five, bend, extend, get your crunch in, and then go ahead and let that knee ground, grabbing whatever you need to here. We know we gotta do it on that left side, so the left leg's coming out. We're gonna point that toe up just a little bit. You're gonna bend the knee. Extend, crunch in, coming out for two, in, out, in, three, out, in, out, in, four. And last one is you reach out for five, bend that knee, reach up again, crunch in, and then take it back towards your tabletop. We've got two more little like tabletop glute thingy bobbers. <coughs> Excuse me, before we start to flow. So from here, once we're in our tabletop, we're just gonna take that right leg, make a big circle, tap it back to the ground, get your fire hydrant, come down. And we're gonna do that for five as well. So reaching out, Circling around, tap down, get your fire hydrant, come down. So we've got two more as you circle the hip, tap it back down, really engage at the top, You're coming down, one more, circle, tap, lift, down. Again, if you need to shake it out, we've got all, we've got a couple breaths here, and we're gonna get that last set on the left. So you're gonna circle that hip, whatever way it feels comfortable to you. Tap it down and then lift. Circling back, tap, lift. Circling back, tap down, lift it. Circling back, tap, lift. I think we have one more, circle it back. Tap, lift, tap, back in the tabletop. And then our last one is gonna kind of build some strength in the arms as well. So we're gonna come down onto the forearms. You're gonna really try to engage the low core here. Um, I was playing with these earlier and quite frankly, um, I still was moving anyways. But you're gonna reach that right leg out. And you're gonna try to lift it without dumping into the spine. So we're gonna do like eight little lifts. So one, two, three, 
four, five, nice, six, seven, eight. And after that eighth one, we're gonna bring the right leg down. We'll go ahead and go directly into the left. So going ahead and getting that little guy up and then doing your eight taps. Oh, for some reason my left side doesn't want to do cheerleader, but I think that was three, four, five, six, seven, eight. After eight, we're going to come in, press back into your child's pose, tint the fingertips so that you're still pretty active, finding that release along the spine. And then we're just going to go ahead and roll back into your tabletop, tuck the toes, and take it directly back into your down dog. Maybe you pedal it out here. Maybe you're ready to be still already. <clears throat> and in your fifth breath, we're just going to take it back towards the top of the mat, inhaling into your flat back, exhaling into a forward fold of your choice. Maybe it's ragdoll, maybe you're already binding. Then as you inhale, arms are going up overhead. Exhaling, hands come into heart center. We're gonna move through three traditional A's and start to flow. So inhale, arms come up. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling, flat back. Exhaling through plank and chaturanga. Inhaling into your up dog or cobra. Taking it back to down dog. Keep that five breaths here. Just clean that down dog in whatever way feels best for you right now. In your fifth breath, in your favorite way, you're going to take it towards the top of your mat. Inhale it into that flat back. Moving back down into your fold. As you inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands come in. Starting to find your second A. The arms rise. Exhaling to your mat. Inhaling into that flat back. And exhaling back through your vinyasa. So whatever amount of chaturangas you like. Maybe you grab an extra breath in an up dog. You know you've got five breaths in down dog, so it's not like you have to rush there. And with that next Exhale, you're going to walk or hop to the feet, to the hands. Inhale into your flat back. Exhale into your fold. Inhaling, arms are coming up. Exhaling, hands come in. Last traditional A, so the arms rise up. Take it down towards your mat. Finding that flat back. And then running through whatever your vinyasa is looking like right now. And then we'll link up and down dog. With that next breath, you're just going to take the right leg up, circle the hip, maybe stack the hip, just whatever feels nice through your side body. And then we're going to go ahead and step through into a warrior one, so the back heel pivots in, trying to square the shoulders. From your warrior one, we're going to go ahead and clasp the hands with the fingers interlace, the pointer finger extended. Really root through those feet. Then inhale as you pull up and lean back on this small back bend here. And then as you exhale, just spin on open into your warrior two.
Exhaling on back into a reverse. And then in that next breath, we're gonna cartwheel both hands to the inside of that right foot. Come on to those back toes and just kind of take a moment to rock back and forth in your lizard. And in your fifth breath, you're gonna really rely on those hands and the feet grounding that in so that you can take this right foot back into your plank. We're gonna hold our plank for just a couple breaths here. We're gonna come down onto the forearms, holding a low plank for a couple breaths. Coming back onto the hands, you're gonna move through your vinyasa, so chaturanga, up dog cobra, back to down dog. Maybe you need to pedal the heels out. Maybe you feel good. In your next breath or so, we're gonna get that left leg up there. Start finding your left circles. Maybe stack the hips. And then you're gonna take that left foot, step in between the hands, start to find your warrior one. Really thinking about trying to stack the knee and the ankle, tucking the tailbone, squaring the shoulders. Those little things will also help as we move into this back bend, interlacing the hands, starting to pull up, stack. And then exhaling into your warrior two. Dropping back into your reverse. And then from reverse, part wheeling on down. Both hands to the inside of the left foot. Back on the right knee. Maybe you're still, maybe you're finding movement. We've got five breaths in this high lizard. And as you're ready, we're gonna really press through those hands and revisit that plank. The left foot's going back to find the right. You've got it for five breaths. As you exhale, you're gonna move into your low plank. And then take it back up to that high plank and move through your vinyasa. In your down dog, you've got a couple of breaths here. Start to pedal it out. Maybe be still. Then that next breath, we're just gonna find a little twist here. So left hand, find somewhere on the right leg to pull, trying to twist you underneath that right arm. Next breath, we're releasing the left hand, taking the right hand back. Then that right hand comes forward. We're gonna go ahead and take the right leg up, stepping in between the hands. This time we're gonna find a crescent. So keeping the back heel lifted, you're just gonna press through the feet. And 
from your crescent, you're gonna bring the hands into heart center. You're gonna start to lean forward as you find your warrior three. Nice. We're gonna bring that back knee up into your high knee. And in your next breath, you're gonna see if you can step back into your crescent. Nice. Opening into your warrior two. Dropping back into your reverse. And from here, we're gonna let those hands cartwheel down to the inside of the right foot once again. So this time we're gonna go ahead and start to really think about engaging the core, kind of taking these movements in whatever combination works for you, but we're gonna make a side plank. So the right hand stays lifted, this right foot goes back. Maybe you find your feet and then open out towards the left. Maybe you're a little bit more coordinated and can do it in one fell swoop. All right, I know you guys are all super strong, so we're gonna try to lift that top leg. And as you exhale, we'll drop that leg, find our plank, go ahead and move through your vinyasa. Taking it back to your down dog, pedaling your feet out, and the left leg lifts. Taking that moment here before you step into your crescent. So from here, we're gonna bring the hands into heart center. We're gonna to start to transfer that weight. Find your warrior three. Nice, we're gonna bring it into your high knee. Nice control. As you exhale, you're gonna see if you can't transition back to your warrior three. Then you're gonna step on back into your crescent. We're gonna open out to warrior two. and drop back into your reverse. We'll cartwheel on down into that high lizard. Just take a couple of breaths here. And then we're going to take it into our side plank. So whatever way helps you get there. Maybe it's one fluid movement. Maybe you're taking it in segments. You've got time. We ended up being in our side plank for 10 breaths. So you can take that transition as slowly as you need. Want that next breath, we'll lift that top leg. And then you're going to move through your vinyasa. Half 
after that, we're taking it back to a quick child's pose. And we're going to go ahead and lift the right arm, threading it beneath the left, finding your threaded needle. Maybe you take that half bind with the left arm, wrapping over and behind you, going for the right hip. We're going to bring all that back towards center and thread to the other side. So this time the left arm's lifting, taking it over towards the right. Maybe you take your traditional threaded needle, maybe you find your half line. So from here, we're going to release. We're going to scoot forward just a little bit into a puppy pose so the hips are lifted. The chin might be towards the mat. You might have the head down with the forehead to the mat. We're going to thread that needle so it gets a little bit different into your shoulder. So pressing through that left hand to find a little bit of lift, right arm lifts, and then threads with the hips lifted. You might find your, side, your, half, your half bind here. It's almost like you can twist a little bit deeper when the hips are lifted. And then from there, we're going to release that side and take it to the other side. So left arm comes up, threads beneath right, choosing whether you stay long or move into your half bind. And so from here, we're just going to come on back towards center. Go ahead and plant the hands, finding your tabletop, and move through a couple cracks out. Just in case you got any weirdness in the low back. We're going to tuck the toes, cover the knees about three inches off the mat. And then find that down dog once again. We're going to take our right leg up. We're going to take it to the back of the right elbow. We're going to hold it for three breaths. Exhaling, you're going to shoot it back up. Grab a breath here. Take it to the left. One, two, and three. Back up. Let it step in between your hands. Back heel is going to pivot in as you come all the way up and over into your reverse. From reverse, we're going to come over into side angle. So maybe you like the hand to the inside or the outside of the leg. Maybe you like it, like it resting on top of the thigh. Starting to open. And then reach towards that little seam in between the ceiling and the top of the wall. From your side angle, we're going to come up warrior two. Try to really pull through that back hand. Nice. In your core. And from here, we're going to straighten the front knee. Drop back into your sky archer. And then come on out wide. Pulling through the fingertips and hinge all the way down into your chosen triangle. Just 
just like we did in our side angle, we're gonna try to pretend like there's somebody pulling this top left hand to get us back up. Once you're out wide, you're gonna pivot the toes in. Put the hands clasped behind the back. Inhale for your length. Exhale into your fold. In your fifth breath, we're going to release the hands to the mat, coming into a flat back. You're going to take that left hand and place it like right underneath the nose, and then open towards the right, letting the right arm lift towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, we're going to take it over to the other side. So the right hand plant center, left arm starts to lift. Coming back towards center. From here, we're going to go ahead and let the hands come to the hips, inhaling back towards standing. You're just going to pivot both sets of toes towards the top of your back. I'm going to hop my back foot forward just a little bit because we're going to move into your pyramid. And we're going to take a slightly different pyramid today, one that's going to play with core. So as you inhale, arms are coming up overhead. The fingers stay extended, but you're um, interlacing the thumbs. So you're trying to keep those prayer hands with the elbows um, glued to your shoulders. You're going to tuck the chin and try to roll down. The hands will eventually tap the floor. The forehead eventually comes to the shins. If you need to release the hands to be able to keep your balance here, feel free. And as we will Come out of our triangle, you're really going to engage the core, trying to keep the arms glued to the head and roll up. Vertebrae, vertebrae. Pressing through that front foot, head comes up last. As you exhale, hands release, coming to the top of your mat. Inhale, arms come up. Exhaling as you fold. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling, we're going to move through our vinyasa to get the left side. Inhaling, dog cobra. Exhaling, back to your down dog. We've got our little bit of core here as we take that left leg up. We're going to let it come hover behind the left elbow for three breaths. Taking it back up, letting it hover behind left for three breaths. Coming back up, stepping in between the hands, coming all the way up and over into your reverse. And then moving into your chosen variation of side angle. So maybe the forearm rests on the thigh. Maybe you're grounded at the mat. We're coming up into warrior two. Trying to pull forward through those hands nice. straighten your front knee and dip back into your sky archer. From sky archer, we're taking it to our triangle, so coming out wide. 
pulling through the fingertips, starting to hinge over, opening the chest, reaching. From here, we're going to pretend like somebody is pulling up that hand as we come up. This time, we're going to split, take both sets of toes out wide. So if you need to look wide, uh, shorten your stance, feel free to. We're moving towards, kind of like a grab a thing. So you're going to, we're going to do eight of these on each side. So you're going to come down to your goddess, take a breath, step up. What's that? Oh yeah, that, that's, I don't know if we're going to do it that way. That kind of sucked when I was doing it yesterday. So we're going to go down into goddess. You're going to come up. You're going to start to kick the right leg out. Left leg out. Back into your goddess. Nice one. Right lateral. Left. Two. Three. Four. Goddess, five, up, left, find your squat. We've got three more, six, seven, and last one, lift for eight. And this time we're gonna take it all the way down into your Velocina. Maybe you just take a moment here to rock side to side. And when you're ready, we're gonna let the hands plant, start to roll yourself back up. We're gonna walk back around towards the front of your mat. So your feet are already set for pyramid so that we can get it the same way we did the last one. We'll inhale, arms are gonna come all the way up overhead. Prayer hands with the thumbs interlaced, arms glued to ears, chin slightly tucked. As you roll down into that pyramid, maybe you can just use those fingertips for balance. Maybe you need to release both hands to the back. And in that next breath, we're going to really glue the arms to the ears, engage your core, and try to roll up. Nice. Ready to step towards the top of that mat. Inhale, arms come up overhead. Exhale to move through your vinyasa. Inhaling into your flat back. Exhaling through your chaturanga. Up on Cobra. Back to Down Dog. Maybe you pedal the heels out here. And that next breath, we're just going to start to make our way to jump through to seated. We're going to start with legs extended out front, inhaling to find your length. Exhaling into that fold. Inhaling back up. We're going to find a half heroes. So the right leg is staying extended. We're going to start to take that left leg behind you. You might have to roll the calf out of the way. Make some adjustments. The knees might be together. They might be splayed apart. Eventually here, you will be able to take the arms up and fold and everything will be connected to the mat. I personally have to keep like one hand anchored in the back or I will roll towards the right. So as you find whatever fold allows you to keep whatever alignments possible,
We're gonna come back out of that half heroes and switch those sides. So the left leg's coming long, right leg starting to swing behind, rolling out the calf or the thigh, whatever you need. The knees might be together, they might be open. Um, there's some space in between them. The sides might feel really different. We're gonna take whatever way we can do to get into that fold, not roll too far to the left. Inhale, we're gonna make our way back up. We'll go ahead and leave this left leg extended. We're gonna swing the right leg around. Just kind of take a moment to rock that hip side to side. Get into that joint a little. And in that next breath, we're gonna place the right foot in the left hip crease. The left hand grounds next to the left hip. As you inhale, the right arm's coming up. And you're gonna start to twist it so the palm's coming forward as you reach behind you. Yep, that back arm might be lighting the sacrum. It might come to grab this left arm. You might find that you can reach all the way through to the right toes. <laughs> you might stay here. I heard a giggle. That's funny. <laughs> I could get my right toes with my left hand. And you're going to find a fold wherever you are. You take it back up. Switch those sacks. The right leg's coming out. We're going to take the left leg up, rocking it. And then we're gonna let the foot set to the inside of the right hip or on that hip crease. The right hand's grounding to help you find some stability. As you inhale, the left arm comes up. And I personally start exhaling before I start my bind because the more empty your lungs are, the less space you have to bind. You're not all puffed up. So finding wherever you are in your binding process and then your pull. We're going to come back up. We're going to keep this right leg extended and go ahead and ground that left foot. So I've got about a fist distance in between my legs. Your right hand grounds next to that long right leg. You're going to go ahead and try to shimmy the left arm to the inside of this bent knee. As you inhale, you're going to find length. Once again, we want to start exhaling before we even start moving as you fold forward and start to find that little wrap with the arm again. You might just be starting to wrap around the knee, just reaching back. You might be able to take the right hand behind you and reach towards each other. You might be able to bind. You might be able to find a fold somewhere here. The left sitting bone will come off of the mat near Marie GC. Inhale, and we're going to come back up, and we're just going to switch those sides. So the left leg's coming long, right foot's planting. You've got your left hand grounded for some stability next to that long leg. We're shimmying the right shoulder to the inside of the right knee. Inhaling, the arms coming up, walk up high. And as you exhale, you're going to start to swoop forward and start rotating that arm to see where you are in your binding process. You can always just have the one arm in the support. You might be able to reach up. You might be able to grab hands. You might be able to pull. We're going to come back up. We're just going to let the right knee fall open. Left foot's going to come find it. Inhaling for your length. Exhaling to find whatever fold feels good in your back today. And 
then that next breath, we're going to make our way back up. We're going to roll the knees together as you start to make your way on towards the back. We've got one last little core thing. Then we're going to have the arms down by the side, the feet pressed into the mat. And we're going to do five on each side. So you're going to take the right leg up, pulse twice, come back down. One, two, down. One, two, so that should be three, one, two, down, four, and five. And on five, we're gonna hold this bridge for five breaths. Then that right foot can come down, hips lower, finding your counter pose of choice. And we're gonna keep, once again, we're gonna check back in. The arms are down by the side, press into the mat. This will help you keep, stay balanced. You've got that right foot grounded, the left foot goes ahead and lifts. And we're gonna pull, we're gonna do the two little pulses for five times and so pulse, pulse, down. One, two, down. Three, four, and at the end of this fifth one, we're holding it for your five breaths. Exhaling as you take your way, make your way back down towards the mat, grabbing whatever counter pose works for you. We're only going to do one back bend because we've gotten a lot of back bending into our practice today. So maybe you want to find a super deep wheel because your back's all warmed up. Maybe you're tired of back bending, so you just want to take another bridge. But for both postures, heels are in close to the sitting bones, aligned with them. With bridges, palms are down by your side, pressed into the mat. Wheels, hands are up near your ears, the fingertips pointing back towards the shoulders. Using your breath, you're going to start to lift and then find eight breaths. If you found a bridge, you're rolling the shoulders beneath you, letting the hands clasp beneath you. In both postures, you're trying to stack joints. And after your eighth breath, we're going to release down towards the mat, finding your counter pose of choice. So maybe it's going to look like your knees. Maybe you're a happy baby. Maybe you're a little ball. But we're going to move into inversions. So maybe you want to take a legs up, maybe you want to take your shoulders stand, maybe you're feeling a full inversion today. We've got 10 breaths. So you have the option to move through multiple postures. If you decide to take a shoulder stand, maybe you also decide to incorporate plow, maybe some death man's pose. After your 10 breaths, we'll make our way out of whatever inversion you've chosen. Nice. And we're going to find some twists. So the arms are coming out wide. Maybe the right leg crosses all the way over the left into eagle legs. Maybe you just want to stack the knees and drop over towards the right. Let the gaze go towards the left.
We make our way back towards center. Switch your legs if you cross. Drop a little more towards the left. Let the gaze go right. Coming back towards center. We're going to uncross, drawing the knees into the chest. Just taking another little egg moment to rock out the low back. And then when you're ready, we're just going to take the grip over towards the right knee. Let the left leg come long and rest on the mat. And then you might adjust the right knee. So angling it towards the shoulder to really get that nice deep wind removing posture. In that next breath, we're going to take this right knee across the body towards the left. Let the right arm drop open. Let the gaze go long. You'll find it's a slightly deeper twist than that first one. The shoulders might come off the mat. So from here, coming back towards center, we're going to hug that knee into the chest and then switch it on out. So the right leg's coming long as you draw the left knee in. Starting to find that wind removing pose. And then we're taking it across the body towards the right. The left arm opens out. From there, we're coming back towards center. Bring both knees into the chest. Rocking side to side again. With that next breath, finding one last full body stretch. And then from here, maybe you move into your Shavasana. Maybe you need to find some additional movements to round out your practice. Feel free to find whatever it is that you need so that you can take that one quiet moment to really absorb your practice.
And in those next couple breaths, we're gonna start letting the small movements return towards the body. Starting in fingers and toes, maybe moving through wrist and ankles. And then whenever you're ready, we'll start to meet and seated. Then inhale, arms come up. Exhale, hands come in. Thank you guys so much for hanging out today. I'm super happy that we got good news from the doctor. And I hope everyone has a great Wednesday. Namaste. 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 Thank you, Katie. Yes. Yeah. That's just great. what the doctor ordered. That was a great practice. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I took my first booty yoga class ever yesterday. How was that? It was nuts. It was so <laughs> much fun. I think I'm going to start doing it, but I can easily see how it like, would in, like, really influence sequencing with the fact that it's so flowy and I'm already so flowy. I'm pretty excited. I mean, I did like 38 minutes and I was like, hey, I can't finish the hour. <laughs> I try to get <laughs> I try to work glutes all the time. I'm so in it. I'm gonna, I'm, you've got me curious. I'm going to check into that, Katie. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I did like, I found it, found it on YouTube, but I'm like really interested in like signing up for one of these packages. Yeah. yeah. Then you can bring it to us. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> we were doing that. And I was like, it would be so funny to have to see Joe do this. <laughs> yeah. We've been working a lot of hips this week and um, my hips are, actually for the first time in all these years actually starting to feel like they're loosening up a little bit so oh, that's awesome okay. yeah that is it awesome is. yay yeah. <laughs> all right thanks guys, guys. Uh, thank you thank you have bye. a wonderful day <laughs> bye. Bye.